Okay, so recently, an extremely famous Twitch streamer, um, Vosh, opened up the good old file manager. Right, I'll open up in it. Right. So he opened up this, or something that looks like this, but worse. He opened up Windows File Manager on stream. Um, obviously, Windows File Manager, you cannot even have tabs. So at least on Nemo, which is, I think, the, the default for GNOME, you can do things like open a new tab, and then you can go to the new tabs. You can't even do that in the Windows File Manager, but you see, that's not, that's not the worst part. When you open this File Manager, guess what the whole world saw? Let's just say... Vosh killed two birds with one stone. The pedophile, the pedo bird, and the beastie bird. Okay? Holy shit, this guy is on a roll. And you see, all of this could have been avoided if Vosh used LF file manager, which is what we are going to be talking about today. Now, a lot of you motherfuckers are going to be thinking, but Sid, the terminal? You can use the terminal to manage files? Oh, you mean you have to do like CP? And then like NKDIR, and then like touch, you have to like touch. No, this is not what I mean. Or I mean, okay, in Vosh's case, it would be something like, or, <laughs> okay, this is not what I mean. There is actually a lot more sophistication and ease of use to this. You can use terminal file managers. It is basically a program. Uh, yes, it a programs or lines of code. And what it does is it does all this CP shit for you. No need to touch a horse, no need to touch a child, no, 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 all right? And imagine I told you all of your files could be managed with simple, extremely fast key presses, and you can bind, bind custom shell scripts to the key bindings. I'll explain that later. Okay, so I have a directory open up here, and in this directory, it really exposes my plans. Oh boy, uh, 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 this is all a fucking joke. It really exposes my plans, and you can see my sus files. But you can't see inside them. You can just see what they are. You cannot actually see this image. Now in LF, you can actually get image preview, uh, but I would recommend against it. It's really hacky and it screws with your shit. Uh, you can see content previews. You can see that. And as you can see, this makes it so much easier. Um, by the way, this is with key bindings, okay? Uh, Vim style key bindings. I'll explain the basics. So you can do your basic shit like um, capital D is delete, so no more taking over the world for me. Um, y is yank, P is paste. Uh, capital C is to like clear. I'll go over these bindings in the LFRC later. This is basically Vim, um, but with file management. So imagine how much faster that is. And another quick thing I should explain is you can actually open up the command line with this as well. So let's say I want to edit this image in GIMP. This is not the GIMP suit. This is um, GNU image manipulation program. If I do echo dollar sign F, you'll see that it outputs the thing you have highlighted. Um, I'll just run that command again, and you can see how it outputs homos, okay? Uh, so uh, dollar sign $f, that is basically the, the command thing, the thing that selects the file you have selected. I I'll explain this in the commands. Okay, this is the LFRC. This is where you can do the really cool shit. So what commands, what options like this do, these just unbind keys, uh, I'll explain uh why? Okay, so CMD touch, everybody's favorite CMD. Again, Vosh B. Vosh be touching the horses all the time, okay? Now, what you can do here is this touch is actually a custom name. Uh, you make custom CMDs and inside that you put shell script syntax. Now, if you read this CMD, you'll see um, the reason I put clear over here is because what um, LF would do is it would show the output of previous command you run if you have it open so always run the clear command at the start um printf this uh just shows file name read this takes input and touch creates the file uh, i have this binded to key cf so let's show that right here i press c you can see that down there i press f and then this comes up i'll zoom in more and i press um And no, you can notice I have spaces in the name. It still works. I press enter. Look at that. We're touching horses. We in business. Or Vosh is in business, I suppose. We, we in Vosh's business, okay? This is why you need to have uh, quotation marks around everything. This will allow you to put spaces in the names and whatever. Uh, the same thing with MKDIR. Again, you can call this anything, but inside this is shell script syntax. Uh, now I'm going to make a file called... Um, 
th- this was actually one of the names of the folders that got exposed by this Vosh guy. Whatever, this is a direct one. I can make more stuff in here. Oh, this video is going to get me. Okay. Now, let me explain another piece of syntax. So this is called unarchiving. This is, um, I call it unarchive. You can really call it unzipping. Call it whatever the fuck you want. These are K statements. Uh, I guess this is like if statements, but better. Uh, this star dot represents any characters and this represents the file extension. So these two, you can have any characters back here, but all files ending with this pattern will have this command run on them. I explained what dollar sign $F means earlier. This will allow you to unzip commands if you press a U. I will show an example of that here, actually, in my university. Uh, I might blur out some of these files for sensitive information. Okay, so here, I have a zip file, I press a U, and it unzips. There we go. Uh, you press a U, and it unzips. And then uh, same thing for all of these. These are different versions. So with one key binding, you can have all of these file types supported. Whatever, you have different um, programs, different file types, you get the point. Now this one, this one's a little special. Um, what this does is this will make a replica of a PDF, but without the password protection. Um, but you'll still need the password. So it's not, this is not hacking or whatever the fuck. Um, it creates a new version called temporary PS. And then this PS, I think it gets converted to a PDF. Uh, the base name is kept the same. Uh, I kind of forgot how the shell script works, if I'm being honest, but it makes me look intelligent, so I'm going to mention it. Uh, Zipper does the opposite thing as archive. It just zips files again. You don't really need to understand the syntax, or may may maybe you should, but I'm going to leave all of this in the description, by the way. Disk usage is another clever one, I guess. It shows you the space, because LF doesn't really show space. Oh, by the way, um, Windows doesn't show space either. You have to right-click, and you have to go in Properties, and then you have to wait, like, about, um, I think, 20 seconds, depending on how large the file is, for it to actually show you the space. This is just way faster. Now, okay, this is a very important uh, CMD. So in LF, there are two ways of opening things. You can press O, or you can press E. Now, E is to edit things. Um, this is with your editor. Uh, to do that, you have to go to your ZSHRC or Bash RC, and then editor, you need, a set, you need to have this setting. So me, obviously, you know your boy. Uh, we do not use anything other than NeoVim here. No, there is only one true editor, I'm sorry. So that is one way to, um, I guess you could say edit files. Now, another way would be to, you can just open them. Now, if you press O, it just goes into the folder. And let's take, for example, this file, uh, mp4. I press O, and it opens it in VLC. Now, to do that, what I have done here is, okay, let me just pattern search for MO. Okay, you can see this command here. So what this um, bar does, or pipe, um, it basically means or. So any file with this extension, or this extension, or this, and so on, will be opened with VLC. Now, what is all this no hop? I don't actually know how to say this, but what, what, what does this mean? Why why this? Why can't I just have VLC dollar sign F? Well, you see, if you had VLC dollar sign F, I'll actually do that right here. I'll go VLC dollar sign F. You'll notice that if I close the file manager, the whole thing closes. This thing will open it as a background process. It will spawn it in a new window, and it'll send the output or whatever to, to nothing, basically. It just kind of deletes the output. And so I can actually open multiple things by doing that. Uh, I'll go back to the example I used. I'm going to open this. I'm going to open this. I'm going to open this. I can open all of these things just from one file manager. That is why we have this um, complex looking syntax right here. Oh, this ends the case statement. All right, now, now let's get to a feature that Vosh, our Lord Vosh, would really like, okay? So this will allow you to set backgrounds really quickly. This basically means... Uh, if I press B, it sets the background to whatever um, file I have selected or highlighted. I'll give you an example. Okay, Albert Camus with the drawing. This, this, you get the point. Okay, that, that, that was a much bigger file, so it takes longer. So with this CMD, Vosh can actually switch between hentai of multiple sorts extremely quickly. This, this is fantastic, okay? Vosh, this is Vosh's favorite file manager, okay? And then, um, okay, this is another one. This is permissions. Uh, you can basically make things executable. Uh, I think I have bind this binded to something. All right, now this is another important feature I want to discuss. By default, in file managers, they will just delete things. They will just like destroy things completely. So what you can do is you need to download this thing called trash CLI, okay? And this will 
create a trash folder. Just like in Windows, you got your fucking recycle bin. And in order to have it so that uh, your selected file or selected files get trashed as opposed to fully deleted, you need to use this CMD. Now, this will basically go through all of the files you have highlighted and turn them into arguments. That's kind of what exargs does. And then while you have files, you basically do this. Trash put. So you will put the file into the trash. <coughs> I will leave all of this in the description. So with this, I can select multiple files and I can put them in the trash. So let me go back to my plans. Okay, so I'm gonna select biochemicals, touch horses, and homo sapiens. I'm gonna press capital D. All of them go to the trash. I'm gonna press capital M, and I think it's capital T. Okay, then I go into my files and I can see touch and horses is right in the trash. Uh, to restore that, you simply run trash restore. I'll actually show you guys right here and it'll give you an option and then you press the number and then it restores so let me see windows touch and, and that's 94 so I press 94 press enter and then I go back here and you can see it's back in the same directory so that's the beauty of uh, trash CLI uh, uh, this one is the most complicated one um, but yeah uh, trash restore I don't think this is self-explanatory you just have to select the number and then okay what you have to do is uh, you have to map this to key binding so okay let me pick okay unarchiver there is no command called unarchiver so the name you gave your cmd okay that is the name you use so you use this name and you bind it to keys au or whatever uh key you want again custom name so you can see trash this is a little bit misleading because it makes you think trash is an actual linux command uh, it is i think it's not, it's not an actual Linux command. So this is a name of this DMD. They're not actual commands. Uh, this you can see, okay, these are just some custom ones. I don't really use this, 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 or any of this. Um, oh, another thing I should mention, when you press W, it opens it in that working directory, okay? So that, this is for things like setting the time. So you can do things like you can set time to reverse. Where is that? Uh, set by a time reverse. This is all the latest files. SN is sort them naturally. I'll just let you do that exploring. Uh, you can do things like control A to rename it by at the end of uh, things like that. And recently LF can now recognize full stops. If I go here and I press capital A, it'll take me at the dot as opposed to the very end. Uh, so that's a new feature of LF. Oh, and here's another thing I should mention. Uh, you don't have to press escape. You can press control open square bracket. Uh, that is some kind of universal key binding as well. It's always bound to escape. Uh, to press escape, you have to stretch your hand on the keyboard. So watch this. Control square bracket. Uh, I should have probably had screen key, but whatever. Uh, you can see all the key bindings here, and I'll leave all of this in the description, and you can do the exploring yourself. But yes, as you can see, use LF. Now, there is one thing I should go over. NNN. That is another file manager. Now, I don't know how to use NNN, but one thing I know is that Vosh fails NNN every time because that man jokes off the mad fucking hentai. NNN is another file manager written in C. I am not making this up. And it uses tabs. So you can see one, two, three, four. You have four tabs. If you press Q, you start closing the tab and then you eventually close out of the whole software. I don't know how to use it, but that is another option. And I do think it is slightly faster uh, than LF. Um, I'm not making it up. It's literally called NNN. There's the proof. All right, so uh, thank you for watching, guys. Please explore LF. Very good file manager. In my opinion, the best. It's like Ranger. Oh, Ranger is trash. No offense. Oh, LF is just faster. But to be fair, LF was inspired by Ranger, so I cannot call Ranger trash. I cannot be too harsh on Ranger. It was written in Python, but LF is just way smarter. It is a fully compiled, compiled binary, and it just uses shell scripts directly. So yes, do not touch kids, okay? Do not touch kids. No, do not run this command. It is permission denied. Instead, use LF. Much better to manage your suspicious files. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.